Hey everybody, welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Dean, and today's episode is JL172. We're doing an oil paint along single subject again, where I do a demo and you're going to follow along at home and you, you can do an acrylic oil, whatever you've got. We're doing oil and we do have specific colors we're using, um, but you can always use what you have and just kind of play it along with us. So um, we did our first episode of this last week um, and that was JL171. Either of those numbers you can put into the search box on jerrysartorama.com, JL171 or JL172. That same list of supplies is going to come up so you can see what colors we have that we're using. Uh, we're using the Lucas 1862 oils. Um, we're trying to do, a, I'm doing two studies. I'm doing a cool version of the complement and a warm version of the complement. And it seems like things went a little off the rails last week. And, um, and I think at the end, people started to get what we were talking about a little more when we talked about kind of the psychology of the two cups, which one might have coffee and which one might have tea, just for the psychology aspect of it. This isn't a do or die, you have to follow Amy's rules. This is not, these are the only colors that can make warmer compliments. These are the only colors that can make cooler compliments. It's not that you can't use just a, you know, a, a primary red, a primary blue, and a primary yellow to do what you're doing. Where we took that from was where we've worked in our color theory lessons that we've got um, through our, our sheet that we've got that's always on um, when you've got the description of the show whether you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook there's the description of the show it says see more you can click on that there are two lists that are links that you can go to that are provided to you for free that you can pull up any show we've ever done which uh, now that we're on 172 could kind of seem a little daunting but if you go to the one that's by the subject matter you can go to color theory and you can see all the episodes that we've done and we've done five or six at this point katie i think and then we've also done composition um this lesson is built on top of those and that's where i think we have kind of just like whoop, lost a lot of people last week we're taking all that information that we learned and then we're kind of putting that spin with the primaries into color psychology which is warm colors make people feel a certain way. Cool colors make people feel a certain way. You don't have to use only a warm color or only a cool color to get that. We were using compliments to get that kind of emotional thing. That's how artists that, that are in museums or very successful artists can use color to make you feel a certain way, okay? So you don't have to use the colors I'm using and I'm doing one cool and I'm doing one warm. So if you really wanna kind of push the envelope, you can do that to see which one kind of you like more. I really recommend that you over time do both. Go back and watch the show and try the other one that you didn't do, okay? Um, we're gonna be using those same color combinations that we had last week. Um, and I know that I'm gonna have you show above, above camera because I'm gonna very quickly, because we wanna get into this. Um, and and if, you, if you like just can't fathom this part, go back and watch it later because I, I just don't wanna like have to use a lot of time to explain it. All right, so here is just a color wheel, right? And we were talking about our warmer colors, which are kind of more in this range and our cooler colors, which are kind of more in this range, okay? So when I'm saying I want you to use for the warm, for this exercise, a study, remember, study's not a finished painting, you are practicing. And practice is a four letter word, I understand, but you need to, to give it a shot, okay? So when I'm saying use that warmer red, I'm asking you to use a magenta because this is your warmer colors in here, right? So it's closer to the middle, so use that magenta. The ultramarine blue is closer to the violet as well, so use that. The yellow that we are using is more of kind of the sunshiny yellow. So that's closer to this side of the color wheel, okay? The other yellow, closer to the cool side, right? So that's what we were using with that. We were using a phthalo blue, which is really more kind of a bluish green blue. 
Uh, it has that kind of green undertone to it. So that's closer to this cooler side. The yellow was a lemon yellow primary, which is more of a greenish yellow, which is closer to that side. Um, the red was more of, and I know people are saying, but it's red, why are you saying it's orange? It is, if you put a whole bunch of reds together and you put them by the most orange looking red to the most magenta looking red, that red is closer to that orange side. So you want it to be closer to that side to be able to kind of play a little more fairly when you're mixing those colors, okay? And, and you were trying to get that orange, you want it to be a cooler orange. So it needed to be with the cooler yellow to put that through. Does that make a little bit more sense with using the color wheel for that? Okay. So I'll have this here, so if we have other questions about it, that's fine. But, and I know that there were some people that were, that were very overwhelmed and not really sure, and then it seemed like there were a lot of aha moments too. So, um, so definitely if, if you really are struggling with this, go back to our color theory episodes and watch right from the start because we talk about primaries, we've got some um, clear overlays that have paint on them, we put them down, we talk about what makes what, and, and, and the color mixing makes a little more sense that way, and then we talk about things like hues and tints and just everything, shades, the whole nine yards. So if those are things that are terms where you're like, what do you mean? You really need to see those things and then come back to this after watching this with kind of all that knowledge and then believe me, this is gonna make a lot more sense. Okay, so so last week we did the orange and blue and we've got our warmer colors here. We've got our cooler colors here, more of that kind of green undertone. Um, so we're going to use those same colors that we used last time and we're gonna switch that out with a, uh, we'll do red and green first. So I've got that magenta red primary. I've got the ultramarine blue. And then I've got the cadmium yellow, which is much more kind of that sunshiny yellow that's kind of airing a little bit more on that, uh, closer to that orange side, okay? For our cool colors, I've got the phthalo blue, which is that kind of more greeny blue. Not to say this isn't a cool color, if you just say, look at this color and say, is that warm or cool? Obviously that's gonna be cool, but it is a warmer, cool color when it's closer to those kind of hot colors on the wheel. I've got that brighter kind of, a little bit more orangey red. I'll move that over in just a second because it looks like I'm cutting it off. There we go, okay. And then we've got a more lemony yellow, okay, which has kind of got that greener undertone. I'm adding titanium white off to the side for all these because we're gonna be using that white. I'm also going to put, uh, do we need this brush in here, do you think, to focus? No, you're good. Okay, I'm gonna take it out because I'm gonna put my uh, Van Dyke Brown, which we're gonna use if we want to kind of darken anything. It's just kind of a dark, very dark neutral brown that we're using in place of black because blacks can be warm and cool. We've talked about that in the black and white episode. If you missed that episode, watch that as well because that's an episode that plays into kind of temperature. You can have a black or a white, which seem like they don't have a temperature and there are undertones that show that they do. Okay, and then there's yellow ochre. So we're gonna use that if we need to knock kind of a color brightness down at all, okay? Because we may, with the last one, play a little bit with that, with, with saturation of color. With these, other than adding that white, we still are, we got some color strength here, right? Which I was doing it more kind of straight up like that just to, to make this a little easier for people to kind of wrap their brains around. I decided we would stick with the cup since in all fairness, people may have already drawn it on their panels and I didn't want to do that. If, if you're playing along at home and you do not have um, 
you do not have uh, the thing drawn, you will have time to do it because I'm going to work on two different ones, okay? And she's going to put the cup up here in just a second. That'll be where, where my face is instead because it's a crazy hair day. So I'd really rather you look at this cup. Um, and, and, and we're going to go from there. Now we are doing, uh, let's do red and green first. Okay, so the one on the left is going to be the cooler version of the red and green. The one on the right is going to be the warmer version. Okay, now we're using a cool and a warm color. What does that mean? Okay, this is just a bottle that I did before. Now, even though this yellow, uh, the green is toned down to where it's almost not even a, a green. It's been just, a lot of the heat's been taken out of it. Um, it's a yellow green, but it has some um, of the yellow ochre in it. This still reads as warm because of that really deep red richness, right? Even though this, this green has been kind of fizzled out. This reads as cooler. It's got that very green green. It's got kind of almost a grass green around the outside. A little bit of a warmer highlight than this one has. And, and it's warm up here, but all, again, that color has been knocked down a little bit. So it doesn't have the heat and the intensity of this, right? Does everybody agree that this looks much warmer? If you're looking at temperature, this looks much cooler. Okay. All right. Now this is, what this is, is this is the green and the red at the almost full saturation. All right. Meaning the color mostly straight from the tube. A little bit of mixing here and there with some of the shadows. But for the most part, straight from the tube. This is where you're losing your saturation. That is, is very grayed looking, okay? This is where you're losing your saturation. This is still pretty saturated. Um, it's lighter, but it doesn't have pack the power punch of the really deep straight from the tube because a little bit of white's been added, okay? So that kind of cools that heat of the color down. All right, everybody, did everybody seem like they got the those two? Okay saying that because I want to make sure that they kind of are grasping mm -hmm. that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're doing, and somebody said that they would like to see the cup of color, I guess. So we can do that. Um, cool, warm. What we'll do is we will switch these. So for the cool one, we're going to do a green cup for the warm one. We're going to do a red cup and then we'll alternate the backgrounds. Okay. So we'll just to make it so that that is a, a warmer uh, kind of green and then that's a cooler green. All right. Can everybody? Yeah, we can see the sketch well enough, don't you think? Yes. Okay. All right. So um, we're using the Pro Stroke brushes. I'm not sure if that's what everybody's got or not, but I'm just going to use that four that's a, um, a big flat because it's easy for me to kind of reach to mix with this. All right, so if this is gonna be my red, we're using that primary, okay? I'm just gonna use it straight for right this second to kind of outline that cup edge so you guys can see it a little better. Okay. Now, if you're wanting to do the cooler one, go ahead and start doing this with your green that you're gonna make. Um, okay. All right, so this is Thalo, so we really are gonna need way more yellow than than the green because remember thalo packs a big in your face punch this is just a little bit of yellow pulled into it or i mean just a little bit of this blue pulled into it and look at how strong that is it's almost electric isn't it okay 
Remember, this does not have to look like a cup, folks. We're just getting, we're playing with color. We're just using that as a, as kind of a, our image. So it can be even abstract if you want. What's important is the way that you're gonna mix the color. Okay, all right. So we've got that, we've got that. Let's kind of ghost in our background. So, We're gonna come back and we're gonna temper this in just a minute. Now with this, we are making the green more of our kind of center of interest. So I'm knocking this orange back because really, or the red back, because really this could, um, at full strength of color, um, if you were going to use that red as your kind of primary color that you were laying down, um, and not the green, you could actually skew this so that this would look more hot than cool. So um, to keep this with our cool color scheme that we're doing, we're going to knock that heat out with that white. See how that little bit kind of softens it and makes it definitely not anywhere. That doesn't mean that you can't take a, you know, a, hard, a harder edge with your red and kind of mix it in there. Um, the beauty of the red and green is that if you mix those together, it's going to make almost like a chromatic black. So that you can actually use that instead of that um, Van Dyke brown. If you want to make some of this more kind of the greenier color, um, let's go ahead and get some of our green mixed. Now Ultramarine does not have the same strength that the Phthalo does. So you can see that's a lot more greeny yellow. It might be hard to see. I really like that color. <laughs> I do too, but it's not as like green as like what, see it's almost like a pea green, isn't yeah. it? Or olive green. It's Amanda and I's shirts that we wear. Yeah. Days out of the week. Yeah, well yours is more gray than this though. Yeah. But it's, it's that based on that color. So with this, now this is a nice, you know, more of a cool color. So we're gonna have to play that down a little bit with some white in a minute so that that magenta is gonna be more of our focus. Cause you could switch these and you could make, you could make this the, the cooler and that one the warmer really easy by, um, as far as what it would make you feel emotion wise by focusing on the saturation only of that red. Um, and then, uh, you know, really blotting this green out some and then making this kind of the more bold of the greens. It, the saturation plays as much into it as anything else. So I'm going to make this a little bit darker and I'm going to pull in since this is not as, not going to make as nice of a, 
kind of black color, I'm going to pull in that little bit of Van Dyke Brown with this. Okay. All right. So to tone these down in the front, let's add even that little bit more white. Okay. We're still doing red and green. This is still a compliment. So now you can see with adding this white, this really, there's your color, Katie. It really takes the saturation out. This really looks almost more like a kind of a grayed color um, that just happens to be a little bit green. And what that's from is from just that ultramarine being uh, a more kind of violety blue. It doesn't, I don't feel like it makes as clean of a green. Um, it makes very nice violets. It makes very nice... Uh, when we did our ones yesterday for the, the red and orange, it kind of makes that really nice blue. Um, so that's why I'm saying you need to play with this because this could be really hot or it could be cool, vice versa. So we're just sticking with those same ones that we used to show you kind of how you could push with those two back and forth. All right, so here, this red is really... Um, strong, so we're gonna have to add a lot more white. And because that's still pretty, got some good strength to it, I'm gonna snag just a little bit of that yellow ochre to kind of temper that down some. See how that took some of the heat out of that. It was still, it was kind of like a pretty, almost a corally pink. We didn't want that because we're trying to make this cooler. Okay. All right. So now let's play with the green. And we know that this is a super hot, super punchy green. So what we're gonna have to do is tone it down some. We're gonna put a little bit more yellow in it. And then we're gonna snag just a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of white, because we're trying to make this come come off as a little cooler, okay? We may not be able to do it with this sitting, but ideally you would want to go back and kind of, you could leave a little bit of the edge of that, uh, that kind of phthalo outline you would want to tone that all down so that you only see pops of it. Otherwise, it's still got a lot of, of color strength and heat to it, okay? Let's add a little bit more white. Again, we're not, uh, there were some people that had said that they really wished that this would have been a more finished project. You, you need to learn to let go of the idea of finished project every time you pick up your, your paintbrush, every time you go to make something, because that's not, a finished project gets you way too invested and too involved in whatever item that you're, you're doing. You can, if you make a mistake, a lot of times we just, as people, we don't want to give up. So we will soldier on even though it's not working and we've made a mistake and we're pretty sure it's there, but we're not sure what it is. This type of practice gives you that ability to make the mistakes here first so that when you go to do final artwork, you have a lot more success a lot more quickly. So that's something that, that you need to, to get over it always having to be some finished piece. And although that would be great and I would enjoy sitting here and doing a finished piece, that's not what the show is about. The show is about you guys taking some time to learn and practice with some color. And with this, since this is oil, I'm just gonna mix right on the actual painting itself. Cause it's, it's still wet, so I can kinda pull that through.
Now see how that's, it's getting cooler, right? We've toned it down a lot. Now we're gonna have to really pump up that magenta to make it a lot brighter to compensate for this, aren't we? And we may have to darken that green some with the brown to kind of bring a little bit more strength of boldness to it. Put a little bit of the white highlights in there just because I feel like that kind of helps tone that down as well. Okay. All right, so let's go over to our warm one here. Put this down so they're not, I'm not covering up the... Could you switch these colors and do these? Like I said, yes. Because I'm sure we're getting people that are just joining and they're like, what, this doesn't make sense. What are you doing? So you could switch those and really play up more the heat of that red and that phthalo and tone down the... Um, the magenta we've got here. Okay, so with this we're going for blot out some of that. We're going for a little bit more full strength, right? So I'm just gonna paint this part here. Do we have any questions so far? Everything's pretty well quiet ask. today so far. Okay. They probably got scared off from last week. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Don't run away. Now see with the pink with this, that makes a really nice, really warm color, doesn't it? back in get a dry throat caffeine to the rescue all right I'm gonna get a little bit of white kind I of have a question mm -hmm. in regards to the mixing mm -hmm. um NJ Pete 27 asked she said or she they said, I am curious about mixing the paint. I was taught that you never use your palette knife, that you use your palette knife to mix, never your brushes. Do you use your brushes because you can get them for less working at Jerry's? No, no. It's to me, um, I like what it looks like when I mix with the brush. I do not, I hate how it's way too, it, the pink color becomes, for me, too amalgamous looking. Um, I don't like what that looks like. Um, just uh, a lot of the artists that I've studied and then studied with, tend to mix on the actual painting itself and or or a little bit you know on the side with the brush like I'm doing and then apply it and I think that it reads better it's much more painterly um, otherwise it starts looking too unless you're really good at applying your paint it looks too Warholish and I think that that's I, I think that that's um, I know when I used to go to classes with my grandmother in the 70s when I was a really little kid I was one of those people that was working over on the little stuff they would give me to do, but I was always listening, listening, listening to hear what they said. And he was a huge palette knife mixing only proponent. And uh, when I go back and look at her works that I've got at my house, it very much shows. I think that she, um, especially because she did a lot of landscapes, I think if they had been painted on the, the canvas as opposed to applied after they were, they were mixed, I think it would have looked very different. Um, would have been much more impressionistic and less controlled. And, and I think that was what she was, I feel like she was always maybe missing from her work in, in my taste preferences. But it's, it's just because somebody says in the class, you know, do what they say in a class because you're going to get chewed out otherwise probably. But, but that doesn't mean that that's what you have to do. You can try it and you can, on, on your own and mixing with your brush is not going to damage your brush just be really good about cleaning your brushes after every painting session 
you're not you don't have to like jam the color up into the in, up into the brushes at all it doesn't have anything yeah. to do with the brush brush life and and you know what i work for jerry's but i have to buy my own stuff too i mean i get a discount but it's not it's not the stuff for here yes they provide it for the show but for my own personal stuff I, I purchase things myself. So when I say something works really well and I like it, it's because I'm using it myself, you know, um, for work. So, okay, do we see how this is looking warmer now? Mm -hmm. Is that getting warmer? So let's play with the, with the, uh, I'm sorry, it sounds like my phone is buzzing. Um, it's interesting to me how much that um, magenta cup is, especially on the screen, popping forward. Yes. Compared to that green one. Yes. Like it, you really can see the... Well, and we can play with the green further to kind of, to make it that way too. Um, let's darken this some, just so we can kind of see what I'm talking about with the... Okay. I'm adding a little bit of the magenta in with this. to kind of brown that up. But it's still got some of the red in there because I put that in there. See how that gets a lot brighter, kind of, or not brighter, but uh, warmer with that little bit of the magenta pushed in there with the green. And if you were if you were here and you could see this, it's, and sometimes it's hard with shine on on oils when we're working with all the light in here. But even with the with the brightness of it being wet, you can see the redness in the green, the warmth in the green that I'm using with that magenta put in there. I mean, you can even mix it in where you can see the magenta more if you want. It's a complementary color scheme so you can kind of play with it how you will and then I'm going to take a little bit of that with that red to put that down under there for my shadow so that it makes that shadow warmer you can always add colors in with to your shadow um, it'll still look like a shadow but that will really help especially with the color to push that color theory that you're going for um, if you add that in and um, because you, it, it, it might not be something people notice um, anything but subconsciously, but it, it's there in, in the mind will read it. All right. So do we want to add a little bit more to our, to this at all? Or do you think we're done and should go to the, how much time do we have? For, 25 minutes left. Okay. Should we switch to the next one? Yeah. Um, or do they want to see this red toned down a little bit more? It's up to... You gotta get in a few minutes. Okay, that's fine. I'll work on it a little bit. You give me a few minutes to catch up. That's fine. And we can still have a little bit of red pop if you want. So you can add a little bit of, this is something my son's doing lately on his paintings and just love it. He's edging them with a little bit of color. So see how the, I put a little bit of that in there. So you know really more this is a red and green. If it starts getting kind of darker and cloudier, we can add just a little bit of heat to the cool. See how pretty that is with that little bit of red? And then I'm gonna tone this. We can make this darker. And tone some of this. Red down with that little bit of brown.
Nola on Facebook said, Nola Jones said, the intensity of the colors is also showing how appealing or not each cup is. Well, and Nola, everybody gravitates towards, everybody's always got their own personal preference, so people gravitate towards one or the other. Um, some people really like cool colors. Some people really like warm colors. It really just depends on the person. And sometimes the subject matter, too, can, it can depend on. No, so I'm going really close to this where it was still really vibrant green and edging that out. Just like I'm going to leave some of the pop to it, but I'm going to try to edge a little bit more of it out. I'm just holding my brush on its side. Okay, now see how we, that temperature change with the, with the saturation? Still got some little saturated pops of, of color that I'm leaving in there, but see how that really helps to kind of cool that off some? That red is still a very, a very warm color, but we've toned it down with, with kind of browning it out to make it cool. Does that... Or is everybody pretty much on the same? Mm -hmm. And you could you could add a little bit more thalo in to make it kind of a darker blue, and then again either add a little bit of the brown or a little bit of the yellow ochre into that yellow to kind of let's do that so they kind of know what I'm talking about. Grab a tip of thalo. See how I just added some thalo to yellow ochre and made this really nice green. So we can even come